I am Matteo Fanchin and I am the co-founder of Pijama Kazama. I am Pari De Stella and co-founder at Pijama Kazama. The studio was founded in 2022 uh, after me and Pari they met in uh, virtual reality on a Unity application called Gravity Sketch. We are designing there together. Yes, Pijama Kazama is a studio specialized in branded games and we are based in Amsterdam, but the team is spread around Europe, so we are definitely a remote studio. Unity has been uh, with a uh, part of our team for a long time. And uh, yeah, I've been introduced to Unity um, and I fell in love with uh, the capabilities and flexibilities. And most importantly, the, uh, the fact that Unity is a game engine, but it's very prone to industrial application, which is something that we are really interested in. So for that reason, I would say, uh, since we started our company, Unity has been with me as well. The creative vision uh, behind the Kazama The Awakening is uh, coming from playing our games that we love and then we try to, to sketch them, especially in virtual reality. So the first creature we're creating in virtual reality. And then I met Paride and then we see the possibility of uh, creating the game. And then uh, we trying to uh, create the game and gather all the, um, uh, our collaborators. We were like 20 people trying to make this game. And then we were too um, immature and not ready to have a full production for a game, so we pivoted on, on service design. And then after uh, two years and a half, we returned to our roots and uh, making our own game. We believe in accessibility, uh, but we realized that there was a lot of room for making very good uh, web games. So uh, we, with that game, we tried to bring uh, as much as we could the quality uh, on a higher level and bring the quality that belongs to console games to web. So that was a, a, an exercise that uh, was fundamental for us to understand what was achievable on these kind of platforms and also showcase the, the capabilities. Performance uh, has it been one of the main focus of the, of the development, so much so that actually I would say the conception of the game is almost founded uh, on the idea of having a good performance. We decided to go with uh, this kind of game, which has a forced camera perspective. Uh, these are constraints that we choose ourselves, right? So that uh, we uh, could uh, employ as much effort in the things that were seen and bring the detail as high as possible only where the player can see and experience the, uh, experience the game. Another pivotal choice that we had to do in order to uh, uh, ensure great performance is the fact that this uh, game is, is staged on a single map. Uh, that map is changing flavor along the journey while the chapter uh, go on, uh, but uh, the map essentially remains the same. Uh, so the, the effort we had to do is uh, try to find ways and tricks to make uh, the, uh, the progression exciting while not employing extra resources. We employed uh, the change of lighting as a solution to uh, support the narrative uh, during the different chapters. Uh, also used light in a very, uh, I would say, uh, unconventional way, uh, almost being it the, the central part of the game. What we tried to do in Kasama The Awakening from the beginning is uh, work uh, integrally with all the parts that make a game. So sound, lighting, uh, looks, materials. And uh, we try to give uh, uh, to each of these pieces the, the, right, the right weight. And uh, especially with, uh, with lighting, uh, <clears throat> the, the, this weight is incredibly high because we're, we're talking about a game that to uh, talks about uh, light, uh, uh, shadow, uh, dreaming, night. And, uh, and light is uh, actually uh, an important narrative tool there. The biggest challenge is, uh, is the fact that we uh, wanted to use baked light at all times. We, we, th we think that using a, a baked light on a web game, on a web game uh, makes it much more interesting and uh, in terms of visuals and actually makes it stand out more. The thing is that using a static light system uh, could uh, limit us in terms of what dynamic things can, can happen in the, in the game. And there are a few things that uh, employ dynamic lighting. So the biggest challenge was to combine and balance the, uh, the dynamic light system with the static uh, light system. And we actually tried to develop uh, custom shaders that allow, allowed us to uh, manipulate the light maps to our needs at every, at every stage of the, of the game progression. 
In order for us to uh, control the light and the light maps and the static light in the, in the way we, we, uh, we wanted, uh, we leveraged the, the shader graph capabilities uh, to make custom shaders that allowed us to, allowed us to do that. It, it, it is incredible how the shader graphs gives the developers who are not so fond with, uh, with uh, custom, uh, custom shaders to achieve incredible results and uh, this is what we use for, for that purpose. We will take these segments of the game, for instance, to show you how the shaders are handling the lights and also other parts of the gameplay. In Kazama The Awakening, uh, we decided to keep the uh, same map for the whole duration of the player journey. Uh, this was instrumental for us to uh, contain the memory consumption and resources consumption. But since the light is baked uh, everywhere, uh, this brought some challenges because we really wanted to change the look and feel for every chapter in order to support the narration. To achieve this, we use a custom shader applied to all geometries of the map, and this is basically building layers. Firstly, uh, we wanted the use to grow organically from cavities like you see here. This is obtained in the shader by firstly designing the liquid effect uh, with several moving noises and a custom texture. All the geometries have a specific UV channel for that purpose, and the texture is designed so that the black areas define where the liquid grows first and white for last. The texture is obtained with a mix of procedural maps using the ambient occlusion and some hand painting. In order to finalize the black liquid look, uh, we neutralize the color of the texture based on the corruption map. As you can see, uh, the effect is controlled by this script uh, that's allowing us to change the corruption level. Uh, this value allows for a smooth transitioning from black and white to normal colors and vice versa. And uh, also it's allowing us to control the amount of liquid in the scene. Since the player arbitrarily decides which light to turn on, uh, we need to control each decorruption point individually. Those empty points uh, spread around the map are controlling uh, where the decorruption happens. We are then passing the location of the empties to the material, and uh, inside the shader, each and every point is used to create a decorruption map. Uh, by calculating the distance from those points, uh, we define the areas to be cleared. The same system, on the other hand, uh, is used in reverse uh, to ensure that the dark entity uh, always has some liquid below it. The vision of, uh, of the game is uh, uh, creating a full series. We are basically mimic a TV show format and the idea is having a total of seven episodes of the duration of a one hour, one hour and a half gameplay. The episode two is going to be uh, about uh, our, one of the creatures that uh, you haven't seen in, uh, completely in the, in the episode one. So there was this uh, um, a, a slime monster with spikes that were uh, trying to capture you and uh, you will definitely get to know this character in a completely new environment. 